Mike here, uh, working with the ejector system. Um, it's a strange, strange beast. Uh, I, uh, first time or two that I ran it, I was feel, I felt like it was smarter than I am, because there's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, <laughs> I decided I was going to uh, work with an ejector here. Um, built this thing from hand, uh, by, by hand, uh, it's all copper, uh, quarter inch throat, and a half inch inlet, half inch outlet. Divergent nozzle, divergent nozzle. Uh, there's some other videos on these. Uh, there's one on making them. So I'm starting to get this thing dialed in. Um, getting some. Uh, well, uh, I couldn't be much happier to be honest. A um, little difficult, difficult to control, but. Um, um, so what I want is to get a, uh, a pressure differential. So I want my evaporator to actually operate at a slightly lower pressure than what the compressor suction uh, compressor has to uh, to compress. So um, I've had this a little bit better, but uh, here we have about 90, I'm going to say 93 pounds per square inch, and our suction's operating at 100 pounds per square inch. So I actually have a seven pound differential, and if I understand this correctly, the ejector itself is actually doing uh, some of the compression. So uh, in the separator column uh, is liquid refrigerant uh, at a pressure equal to the suction pressure from the compressor there. And uh, this is the uh, suction line, this little loop-de-loop -loop I'm not too happy I had to do, but that was uh, the orientation of everything until I got it set up. Um, <clears throat> that refrigerant is at suction pressure. Um, liquid can actually be fed off the bottom through that loop, through this gate valve, which can be opened all the way up to um, um, really a non-restrictive 3 8 inch, um, or the inside diameter of a 3 8 inch tube. It might actually be 3 8 um, inside there. And then uh, it goes through this little ravioli fitting. See, I got two of them here that I had to make out of one inch pipe. Uh, it goes through the evaporator, fans running. Um, and then uh, the gases and liquid that actually are produced come up through the sight glass, temperature reading, pressure reading, a little loop-de-loop, -loop, and gets drawn into the uh, convergent nozzle by the uh, high-pressure liquid that's coming through. There's an orifice down here. It sticks, shoots right into the throat, creates a low pressure, and uh, draws vapor and liquid through this. Now, what I've found <clears throat> is that in operation, the restriction in the uh, in the tip of the, the primary modem nozzle, that is the uh, uh, refrigerant actually being fed in from the high side, um, is more or less sufficient. I wouldn't mind if it was a little bit a little bit smaller uh, to allow me to pretty much open up this needle valve. Now, this was normally my refrigerant control in the past, and I have to really crank it down. Um, in order to uh, control the liquid level in my evaporator. Um, but what I've found is that really cranking it pretty well wide open, there's some restriction there, but still rather warm after that uh, needle valve, um, allowing most of the uh, metering to be done in the primary motive nozzle in the ejector. Um, what I've found is this gate valve down here, to give you an idea of where it's at right now, mostly closed. Now you can hear, it's pretty loud actually, the sound of that refrigerant passing through. Most of that sound is coming out of the ejector. Uh, you can see a little bit of liquid, uh, cold liquid refrigerant bubbling up through. Now I have about, instead like of still about a seven pounds, I've had as much as eight or nine. It's pushing nine pounds, pressure differential. Um, I'd like to actually get a differential gauge of some sort um, to look into that or try to construct something like that. Now, <clears throat> by leaving the needle valve pretty much where it is and just controlling the gate valve down here, um, if I restrict this to a certain point, keep closing it down and closing it down, that pressure differential starts to rise and rise and rise. Um, and really, with a, the suction pressure, the excuse me, the uh, evaporator pressure um, will drop as the uh, suction pressure will, will rise. Stay the same. Um, now, something kind of curious happens. If I open this up a little bit, open this gate valve up, 
allow more refrigerant to be admitted. There we go. Notice the tone change. It surges a bit. The pressure rose. We were down around 92, 97. Or 92, 93, now we're up to about 97, 98. Pressure there rose as well, 101, 102. Still got a little little differential there, not bad. But what happens, and you can actually see it in the gauge as it flutters a bit, and as the tone changes, I believe it's actually the ejector's drawing some cold liquid uh, off the evaporator, so it's flooding. Or uh, it's slugging, really plugging back through the ejector. The ejector doesn't really like that. When that happens, the pressure will rise in the evaporator. It seems to be best that it sees only uh, only vapor. Maybe even superheated vapor would be just fine because uh, it's rather difficult to control. Um, I think you could probably get away with a TXV on this. That's probably what's normally done. Allow superheated vapor to pass through the ejector. Um, I might look into that. I think what I'm probably going to do is uh, create kind of an accumulator tank up here. I don't necessarily want to rely on thermosiphoning and have, say, a, say a one-inch tank similar to this separator connecting this line and that line and having the uh, gate valve feed the bottom and uh, the ejector draw off the top because then I'm mostly going to have to rely on thermosiphoning. I like the fact that I'm rapidly pumping refrigerant through there at a higher rate. Um, so I'll probably look at a, a small accumulator but not necessarily a separator like that, uh, if that makes sense. So it'll really just allow for some surging and allow the uh, ejector to only really draw vapor through. But uh, see where we're at, about 95, about 102. It's not about a seven pound pressure differential, but you can hear the surging. If I open it up even more, I don't know if you can see it or not. Liquid in the uh, sight glass here. So I actually kind of back up in the uh, in the separator over here on the medium pressure side. I'm gonna just continue to do this pretty consistently. So what I'm getting at is this is a hell of a lot of fun. 97 pounds, 100 pounds. So yeah, we've lost some of our differential there. Um, something else I did here, this is my uh, cooling apparatus for my water-cooled condenser. Um, it's pretty makeshift, but it didn't cost me anything, I already had all these parts. Just have a uh, pump down there, I don't know if you can see the steam coming off of it or not, but it is a little steamy. Uh, this would probably work a little better with some uh, screen door screen or something like that, that the water would... Um, adhere to a little better. Uh, um, started off with the pressure of, about, or excuse me, temperature of about 72 degrees out here. Uh, it rained today. It's actually cooled off quite a bit from what it's been. Um, temperature rose and rose and rose, but got about 103, and then it seemed like it would stop. We're up at about 106 now. Um, I don't know exactly what the uh, my temperature differences are. You know, water inlet, water outlet. That's something I would like to find out here sometime. Uh, I do know that I'm not getting nearly enough subcooling. Uh, this is right here, this sensor, this T. Uh, that's refrigerant after it's coming out of the condenser and heading on through some filtration and stuff to uh, go to the, uh, the ejector. Um, I'm going to have to design something a little bit better. Um, that's just a tank full of water with a coil of copper tubing in it. Um, actually right there is our superheat coming off the compressor and that's after the uh, condenser so not a lot of uh, temperature drop um, subcooling is pretty atrocious so. uh, you see these two values here uh, that third one is the, um, the accumulator so that's our medium pressure there and the very last one is uh, coming off of the, uh, the low pressure evaporator you see there almost exactly together, they're tracking pretty closely. I've actually seen that to the point where um, 
the evaporator is as much as two and a half degrees colder than the accumulator, which is something I'm looking for. Um, here it's surging quite a bit now. I kind of wish I would have placed this sensor uh, a little bit further down. Um, the sight glass might be having something to do with a little bit of the surging. I'm not sure that that, that widening, that opening volume there. Um, but if I put a uh, another tank of some sort here to collect some of the surging, I'm probably going to install a sensor just like I did here that would just take liquid temperature in there. Um, so might get a little bit of getting a little bit of superheating, but um, I need to insulate the whole thing. It's uh, it's all bare and you know, that's not good. Um, but anyway, that's just a little update on the uh, the ejector system. So thanks for watching, huh?